good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be settling the ultimate debate, the ultimate challenge right here between the WWE Elite Collection taking on the AEW Unrivaled Collection, Mattel versus Jazzwares and Wicked Cool Toys. Which one is superior? You guys can let me know down in the comment section below if you guys own both of them and comparing them. Today, we're going to run these guys through some tests. You know, we're going to take a look at head sculpt. We're going to take a look at articulation. We're going to take a look at overall appearance. We're going to take a look at everything, man. We're going to compare the two see which one is best you know i'm gonna recommend some upgrades for both you know which one could be better where both of them fall short where both of them excel what they could learn from one another and just overall give you my personal opinion on both waves as a whole now i will say one thing that's kind of unfair is that you guys know that this is the first series of unrivaled collection figures so it's very difficult to say but if i were to take wwe elite series one and compare it it wouldn't be fair either because they started in 2010 so i wanted to start with the most current figure set so far we have elite 78 randy orton right here. We also have some Ultimate Edition, some Top Talent, some Women's Figures, and then we have all of the All Elite Wrestling's Unrivaled Collection Series 1 here for comparison. We got their championships. We got everything coming forward. I thought today Action Figure Surgery Episode 50 would be going up, but I didn't want to rush it out. I wanted to make sure that I had everything in place, and I didn't want to rush it. I wanted it to be a really good video, so just be on the lookout for that in the next few days. But as it stands here today, guys, we're going to compare these two and talk about everything in between. Mattel WWE Elite versus Jazz Wears AEW Unrivaled. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now the first thing that we can obviously say is we already knew this would be a thing guys and that has to be the skin tones of the AEW figures. You know, we've already known, they've been pretty transparent about how the uh, the skin tones will be fixed going forward. So obviously the Kenny Omega is too pale. He's too pale. The rest of the figures are probably too pale too. They would look much better with like these other skin tones that Mattel has right now. I think that Mattel gives us a fantastic range of skin tones. You know, uh, Seth Rollins Rollins and Dolph Ziggler and Randy Orton, Finn Balor, all those guys have like different varying skin tones and I think that would be beautiful to see from AEW figures moving forward. But we know that would be fixed going forward. This Kenny Omega would look a million times better with a different skin tone, which would obviously affect the head sculpt as well. But if we start off with the scaling, guys, let's start off with the scaling. I think the scaling is pretty damn close. I think you can put both sets in your collection without any fear of one being gigantic. You know, back in the day with the Jax figures, Rey Mysterio would be the same size as Great Khali. I think uh, they've done a pretty good job of scaling these guys to the, the to the WWE figures. I think Randy Orton's supposed to be 6'5", and uh, Kenny Omega's supposed to be 6'1", and, you know, he's not the same height as him, and he's not, like, too, too much taller, so I, I'm, I'm going to take it. I think it works out well, especially if you look at their chest. I still feel like that works out pretty good, and my camera's kind of looking down right now. It's not at perfect eye level for the figures, so that could actually be even better than we're looking at it right now. If we take a look at the head sculpts, I think that Mattel has a fantastic history of head sculpts, and not every head sculpt they've ever done is perfect. I've seen some terrible Mattel head sculpts, and I think that in the right skin tone, the AEW figures would be a lot better in the in the head sculpt department. I know I go back to this a lot, but the Kenny Omega they showed off at New York Toy Fair, that head sculpt, and even the head sculpt that they show on the front of the packaging of the basic ring looks absolutely perfect, and uh, it had the right skin tone, it has the right paint apps and stuff like that. I think that head sculpt is damn near perfect. This is a really good Randy Orton head sculpt, say what you will. I think a lot of people either hate it or like it. I think it looks like Randy Orton. I, I am going to add a beard to it, but even if you want to compare this to, you know, this Ronda Rousey who looks just like Ronda Rousey, or if you wanted to compare it to the Seth Rollins figure that we got, it looks just like Seth Rollins. So I think Mattel does a really good job of head sculpts, and hopefully AEW will follow the same path as they progress through their line. I think they could get even better and better as we go. But I think for the first wave, the uh, the head sculpts aren't bad. I think that the stronger head sculpts from uh, AEW so far would have to be the uh, Matt Jackson. I really love the Matt Jackson. Jackson head sculpt. I think it looks just like Matt Jackson, and this actually got my first vote out of all of the AEW Unrivaled figures so far. This one is my favorite head to toe. I think it's a pretty perfect figure, and I love that a lot. Now, if we're going to compare the articulation between the two guys, I think that the head isn't like, I feel like you can actually get a lot more uh, head movement out of a Mattel Elite than we give them credit for. They actually can look down a decent bit, up a little bit. They get some head pivoting. You can obviously turn it all the way 360 style on them. The big thing is in the the torsos. Now, the torsos aren't horrific. I think they do get pretty good articulation as, at least like crunching forward. Obviously, you'd like a better ab crunch, but since this is one solid piece and it's not a soft ru 
rubber like a like an AEW figure, which we'll see in a few moments. Uh, they cannot dip in further than that, so they, they it does look a little bit lackluster when you do it like this. They do have single jointed arms, so this is as far as it will go in, which is is just it's it's de it's definitely it, it leaves you wanting more. I can say it like that. It definitely leaves you wanting more. Now, if you want to compare it to an Ultimate Edition, which is a thirty dollar price point, it is a little bit more. But not only do you get the double jointed arms with a Ultimate Edition, you do get interchangeable stuff. You get cloth goods, you get interchangeable heads, and you get a lot of stuff. So there is a double jointed arm from Mattel, which is much better than that. I mean, you can go all the way here. He can grab his face. That Randy Orton is not going to be grabbing his face anytime soon with that single jointed arm right there, but I think the double jointed arms for Mattel's figures are absolutely fantastic when they use them. So I'm like, look at that right there, man. I mean, that is, that is wonderful. That is what you love to see, and I'm not sure if, you know, they're going to adopt that moving forward after the AEW figures. I'm not sure if they're going to continue with that. You know, you could continue your ultimate line just give them more accessories you know adopt the double jointed arms for the elites and then just for ultimate editions give them a lot of cloth goods or something to make up for the ten dollar price point and i like this is the same as aew you get a bicep swivel you got the you know 360 rotation right here you can rotate and hinge this so you can do all your rotations here you can up and down that for the legs he can do the splitsies now one thing that is prominent with the with the wwe mattel figures is that the they these guys have pine cone joints so you know sometimes the the legs can be a bit stiff this randy orton doesn't suffer that but uh the double jointed knees is nice you do get rotation here in the boot you do get ankle pivot which isn't as strong as a as a aew figure it's not bad by any means but it is uh i don't think it's as good as the ankle pivot from an aew figure but overall i mean you can do some great stuff i mean i've been pick fetting with mattel wwe figures forever and i can still do pretty good poses with them i think that they can pose now are they as great as like marvel legends or, or stuff like that probably not i mean they are slightly larger and when you get ball joints on these legs they can they can do a lot more i feel like you know you don't feel like you're going to snap their legs off but i think mattel's articulation is not horrendous now sometimes it is on certain figures like certain figures can't move sometimes and it's very obnoxious and terrible and there are some poses that don't look as clean like obviously there's some moves where you're just like ah eh, that's the best you can do i'd say maybe a package pile driver is tough some other things where it's like bending the head down and really wanting to get inside that ab crunch but for aew figures i feel like i don't need to use kenny i feel like using cody would probably be better because the head kind of is prevented by the long hair but he can look down pretty much you don't get as much head pivoting i feel like with this maybe you get more with cody uh probably not you actually don't get as much pivoting i think as mattel's but in your ab crunch you can literally crunch all the way down because of the softer portion down here on the torso which we just referred to it allows for this to crunch forward down and this piece the lower torso goes down inside the crotch which allows for a much better ab crunch that is just beautiful to see man that is so lovely you get this like ratchet joints in the shoulder, which I absolutely love. They prevent it from getting locked up and it prevents it from getting loose. You get the full 360 there. You get the bicep swivel, double jointed arms like we saw with the Ultimate Editions, which are very nice to see. So this is just your basic standard articulation for an AEW and rival figure. The hands do the same thing. It's like a ball hinge right here where you can rotate it and you can go up and down. Another thing the Mattel figures cannot do is this. They cannot do it like this. Now in Ultimate Edition, it can do the upper part like that, but their ab crunch is just just not it's kind of non-existent to be honest with you like it can barely move down especially with that lower part being hard it is not moving anywhere but the kenny omega here from the a aew and rival can do this and it can move forward going down to the legs all of the aew figures are on ball joints which allows for a really nice articulation you get the upper thigh cut which i didn't mention with a mattel figure you also get upper thigh cut which i didn't cover you get a really nice double jointed knee which is beautiful to see you do get the boot rotation and you get wonderful ankle pivot right there so you guys can see how much better it just feel it just moves much better i don't know how to describe it now i feel like if you're a stop motion artist or you love pick fetting or something like that I, I think if it had the aew kind of articulation you could have like you would have much more fun i think i just think posing around the aew figures is much more fun they just feel fantastic in the hand now the mattel figures are great as well and they look great i mean they, they absolutely look great and i think both lines offer a ton man i think both lines are fantastic for what they are so far mattel has a 10 year history of giving out bangers. Of course, they have their head scratchers, and I'm sure the Unrivaled Collection will also have some head scratchers in the future. It's just the nature of figure creating and making action figures and stuff of that nature. I also wanted to get in Brandy right here real quick to compare right here. So the left is an Ultimate Edition Mattel figure, which is $30, and the one on the right is a $20 AEW figure. I think as a base women's figure, this Brandy is really good, man. I mean, she has double jointed arms. She has double jointed knees. She has upper thigh cut, ball joints. She is on heels, so 
so they're kind of more difficult to pose around and stand up because they are heels, but that's, I mean, that's heels for you. But going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Ronda, these figures are virtually the exact same, which I think is excellent for the AEW line. If they make every women's figure the standard of this brandy, they're not going to have any issues because a standard WWE Elite Mattel women's figure doesn't have ankle pivot. It doesn't have double jointed arms, but I feel like the only thing that really this brandy has over this Naomi figure is double jointed arms. And then maybe, I, th I feel like this figure does have ankle pivot even though it has heels. Yeah, it does have ankle pivot even though it's on heels, so you do love to see that. But some women's figures that I've gotten from Mattel are just terrible. They don't even stand. I I'd say probably just the basic. The basic women's figures are just not good. But overall, guys, I think, uh, you know, pros and cons. Let's weigh the pros and cons. Another thing, I mean, the championships fit perfectly in the collection. I will say, I think that the material that they made the Mattel belts out of, like, this is much stiffer and it goes on a lot easier. I find it kind of difficult to put the AEW belts on because they're kind of flimsy, like, th these parts are flimsy. If you would just make these parts, like, the little nubs right here, if you made those, like, a harder material or, like, a plastic, I feel like they would go on better. I just find it sometimes difficult to put the belts on, but that's just a little minor gripe sees right there, but I think they fit perfectly together. But overall, weighing the pros and cons of both, both lines are absolutely fantastic. I love collecting both lines. I'm looking forward to the bright future of the AEW Unrivaled collection. Of course, Unrivaled Series 1 is not perfect. I mean, the skin tones, some of the head sculpts are suspect. That's probably the only two things that I would say are a gripe about these. And then the articulation of Mattel figures could improve. I think double jointed arms would be absolutely beautiful. I don't really mind the torsos. Some torsos on some figures, such as Eric Rowan and Big E and... and guys like that definitely have a problem with. Like, they will not pose around whatsoever. It's actually a very big headache to pose around those guys. But I think collecting both lines moving forward is going to be bright, man. I mean, they are they are excellent. I love them both to death. And I think you should buy both. I think you should absolutely buy both. Unless you're just, I mean, if you're not a fan of WWE or AEW, then I mean, don't buy the figures. But I think if you're just an action figure lover, if you love action figures, if you love collecting figures and posing them around and doing photography and all that stuff, you're going to get a lot of enjoyment out of both of these lines because they're both fantastic, and I think both of them should coexist in your collections doing fantasy matchups. I mean, we've been waiting forever for official Kenny Omega Young Bucks figures, and now we can finally do those matches without having to make customs or pay outrageous prices for customs or, you know what I'm saying, do any of that stuff. Now we have an official figure that you can do all those fantasy matchups with, and it's a beautiful thing to see. I think any pick fetter, stop motion artist, anybody like that, photographer, you're going to have a ton of fun with either line and they're both just super fun to collect. It honestly makes me want to see, like, Mattel create a Kenny Omega and then Jazzwares and Wicked Cool Toys make a John Cena or a Finn Balor or something like that. I think that'd be so cool to see each of them in their own lines. And I think one thing, as we get more parts from AEW, that actually may be something that we can see because we've seen a lot of customs of these guys in Mattel form. Now I'm ready to get more parts of these so that we can make customs of WWE guys. I think that'd be really cool. But overall, both fantastic. They both are around the $20 price point. I think Walmart actually offers elites at like two or three dollars cheaper, possibly. I think the it just kind of depends on where you are in the country. But if you want to grab any of the figures you've seen today, guys, go over to Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MD Toys to save yourselves 10%. I love the future of both these lines. I love both of these lines so much, and I can't wait to get a lot of use out of them here on the channel. But it is super exciting and fresh to have a new line to collect, a new line to pose around, and uh, maybe keep Mattel on their toes a little bit when creating, you know, future figures and future ways and things to consider when creating their figures and vice versa. But that does it for the WWE Elite vs. AEW Unrivaled Collection video, guys. Let me know which figures you like better down in the comment section below. Which one do you think is the better standalone action figure? Which ones are you more excited to collect moving forward? Answer all of that for me down in the comment section below, but I'm getting out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.